This is going to be a brief follow-up to my previous video, There Are No Theists in Hospital Waiting Rooms. I need to address some points that have come up in comments. Point one, the title was chosen to be provocative. The statement that there are no theists in hospital waiting rooms refers to the fact that relying on modern medicine represents an extremely small compromise of faith, one that I think would be expected of a rational, loving parent. But it suggests that a person of faith is not willing to rely passively or exclusively on prayer or the will of God to heal their loved one. I'm thankful for the good people who make that small concession. But if you listen to a faith healer, a Christian science practitioner, or just someone with a deep religious conviction, going to a medical doctor is putting your faith in a secular power rather than relying exclusively on the will of God. Point two, the Bible and Jesus is the source of the beliefs that these people hold. I can't list all the scriptural evidences for the power of faith or prayer. Jesus is said to have healed many by miracle, including performing exorcisms, casting out demons, and the laying on of hands. He even healed one man by accident. He even brought one man back from death. Leviticus has much to say on the subject of blood and Jehovah's Witnesses take it very seriously. Who can say that they are wrong and the rest of us are right? Let's be really clear. The Bible supports miraculous healing. It does not support professional medical intervention. Why should it? It was written by a pre-scientific people who had yet to invent advanced science or medicine. But anyone who chooses to live their life according to the Bible is likely to come to the conclusion that faith healing is the godly thing to do. It's not that these people are insane or bad human beings. They are more faithful to the Bible than most liberal Christians. Their only real fault is having too much faith, not enough doubt. The mistake is not in misinterpreting the scripture, it's in not rejecting it in favor of personal morality and instinct. Their crime is following the example of Abraham their crime is acting on their faith in God's Word. Point three, you can't have it both ways. You can't be a biblical literalist and reject the literal words of the Bible. You can't say that these people are wrong for believing in the power of prayer and then turn around and talk about how useful prayer is. You can't tell stories about how God chose to heal your grandmother of cancer when the doctors couldn't and then express regret that a child was allowed to die of cancer because of the parents faith in God. The law is very forgiving of religious medical neglect because of the protections of religious liberty. We can't let the state choose which religions are too literal in their interpretation of scripture and which are just literal enough. We can't protect the liberties of the Baptists and Methodists unless we protect the liberties of the snake-kissing revivalists. Point four. Why did I choose the ones who walk away from Omelas to illustrate this point? The last video was aimed at the liberal Christians who profess the beauty of Christianity. These people, the Jehovah's Witness, the Christian scientists, the full gospel fundamentalists, they are all living according to principles that you profess. They just go a little further in their faith than you do. The people of Omelas were good people. They cared for their own children. They loved and supported each other. They worshiped, they helped the sick, they celebrated life. But each of them knew that there was a child in suffering, the hidden keystone of their culture. There had to be a dark side to Omelas to make the light side possible. Well, Christianity, here is your dark side. I don't deny your light side. Christians have done wonderful things. Terrible things, too. The same is true for Islam. A peaceful Muslim must also answer for atrocities done not only in the name of Islam, but according to the commandments of the Quran. All Germans who remained in the Nazi party willingly, after learning of the final solution, shared in a part of that crime. We are responsible for our voluntary allegiances even if we are innocent of the actions of the other members. So my message to all liberal Christians, you rejoice in your beliefs, 
but somewhere an innocent child is suffering for them. You are complicit in everything that happens in the name of Christianity. Will you just accept that as a consequence of over-adherence to Scripture? Will you choose your faith at the cost of child sacrifice? Or will you be one of the ones who walk away from Omalas?